Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will continue with our news app. In the previous video, we have set up retrofit. So if you have not yet watched it, I'll highly recommend you to watch that first and then watch this video. Now, in this video, we will cover mostly room database part like creating database and writing queries. Okay, but you will be wondering why is there a need of room database? Because we'll be saving our favorite news article in the favorite tab, which means we'll be storing the favorite news articles in the database so that when we open the app for the next time, then all the favorite articles should still be present in the favorite tab. Got it? Now let's begin it. First. Go to article. If you remember, this was a JSON data that was converted into article data class, right? Basically, this is our article only like a template. So when we save an article in favorite, then all the parameters present inside it like author, content, description and all are also saved as stable columns. But very stable. That we will create now. But before that, let me refresh your memory. Room database consists of three components, entity, DAO, that is database access object and database. So entity defines data structure, DAO provide method for data access and database serves as a main access point. Got it. We will create classes for all three of them. So first let's start with entity. Entity represents a database table, including its columns, data types and primary key. Now, we already have an article data class in which all columns with its data type is present. So all we need is to create an entity that is database table and a primary key. So let's create it. First, above article data class, mention entity annotation. And inside it, table name as articles. And done. Then we need to add primary key. For that, we will require a unique column that will be our ID. So first I'll create an ID as int question mark is equal to null. Which means ID can hold an integer value or a null value. Now I'll set primary key on it and make sure to keep auto generate as true which means that the database will handle generating unique values for it. And that's it. Our entity class is ready. Now let's move to our second component that is DAO. See, DAO is an interface that provides abstract methods enabling CRUD operations like create, read, update or delete. So let's create it. First, right click on DB package and create a new interface class. Name it as article DAO and done. So here we will implement all the database queries such as insert query, select query and delete query. These are the three database operation that we need to perform on the favorite article. Like adding to favorite means insert query, then to display all the favorite articles means select query, then to delete a particular article means delete query. Easy, right? Now let's implement it. Here I will write DAO annotation that will mark the interface as a data access object. And then further, let me write the code first and then I'll explain you. Okay.
and done. Now see, insert annotation is used for inserting data into the database. Simple, right? Then what is this on conflict? So on conflict strategy dot replace means if there is a conflict, like if same primary key already exists in the table, then the old data will be replaced with the new data. It's basically a safe way of writing code so that we don't face any error in future. Then we have created a suspend function named as absurd that inserts or updates an article in the database. The suspend keyword indicate that this function should be called from a coroutine. Then lastly, it returns long, which typically represents the primary key of the article. Next is to display all the favorite article. So for that, I have used query annotation with a query as select star from articles. Articles is the table name. Then I have created a function as get all articles and written type as live data containing a list of all articles in the database. Simple, right? The next is delete annotation. It is used for deleting data from the database. Then again, we have created a suspend function as delete article, which will delete an article from the database. And suspend will make sure that the database operations are performed on a background thread. And that's it. Our DAO interface is also ready. Next, again go to article. Here, as you can see, int data type is supported by database. Fine. String data type is also supported by database. That is also fine. But source data type is not supported by database because source itself is an object. So what we need to do is to convert it to a data type that is supported by the database. And that is nothing but type converters. Type converters is used to convert complex data types which are not supported by database into a format that is supported by the database. Got it? Hence, to do that, first we need to serialize the entire data class. Now, what is serialization? Serialization is the process of converting an object into format that can be easily stored or transmitted. So, I will write here as serializable. Then we need to create a type converter class. So right click on DB package and create a new class. Name it as converters. Here we need to create two functions from source and to source. So first let me write the code and then I'll explain you. And done. Now see, to tell compiler it's a converter class, we need to mention type converter annotation here. Then I have created a function as from source, which will convert source object into string. Now, if you'll see here in source class, there is two values in it, ID and name. Out of which we don't really require ID, but we do require name. So come back to converters class. Here we will convert only source name. This function will be used when storing a source object in the database. Then next function is to source. Here we will convert name string into source object, which will create a new source object using the provided name. And as we are not using source ID, hence I have mentioned source name twice. Basically, this function will be used when retrieving a source object from the database. And that's it. Now let's move to our room database third component that is database. Database serves as the main access point and also it defines the database version and entities. So let's create it. Right click on DB package and create a new class. Name it as article database. And 
Here we need to create and set up the database. So to tell the compiler it's a database class, here we need to mention database annotation. And inside it, entities as article class and version as 1. Then it is very necessary to mention converter class in the database. Hence, I will write here as type converters annotation with its converters class. And then, now listen to me carefully. We will make this class as abstract class because we will be creating an abstract function in it later. Then, as this is the main access point of the database, so article database will extend room database. Now inside it, I create an abstract function as get article DAO which declares article DAO interface. Abstract function basically has no body in it. Then we will create a companion object. So whatever present inside companion object is static and can be accessed anywhere in the code using its name. Then inside it, it's mostly syntax only. So let me write the code first and then I'll explain you. And then, now see, volatile annotation ensures that changes made by one thread are immediately visible to other threads. An instance variable holds the singleton instance of the article database or null. Then, this is a lock object which is used to synchronize the database creation process. Basically, this block ensures that only one thread can execute the code inside the block at a time. Got it? Then this is a custom invoke operator for the companion object. Basically, it allows you to create an instance of article database by calling article database context. Invoke function follows the singleton pattern ensuring that only one instance is created. Then this line checks if the instance is already initialized. If not, then it enters a synchronized block using lock object to ensure that only one thread can create the database instance at a time. Then inside the block, again, it checks if the instance is still null and then creates the database using the create database function. I know you will be wondering why is there a need of invoke operator function and all. Because invoke operator is used for simplicity when creating an instance and also double tick locking pattern is implemented to ensure thread safety during database creation process. Lastly, I have created a function as create database. It is responsible for creating the article database instance using database builder method. 
Then it also specifies the database class, database name, that is article underscore db dot db. Then finally, build it. And that's it. Our room database part is also done. Now, in next video, we will set up our adapter. So stay tuned for that, okay? So yeah, that is it for the video. If you are new to this channel, then please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.